Here we go. Picks and bans for game number three, Anarchy versus Najin. And uh, what a, a statement for these guys it would be to come in and win their first match. Well, and what a Champions. dire circumstance it would be from Najin by that same token. Seriously. Zero ban. Yeah, it's a pretty serious game for both of these teams. And if Anarchy loses, they're like, oh, well, we took a game off from not too bad. If Najin loses, it's like, oh, we are the worst team ever. Wow, actually banning out the Evelyn right there. So yeah. a bit of respect. I don't think that's quite necessary. See what Anarchy decides to do. Their first game, they did ban Azir, Cassiopeia, and Lulu on that blue side, even though they let Lulu through the second time around, didn't get picked up. I mean, Evelyn is just one of those champions where you need to sort of change what you're doing to play against, even if she's not doing a lot of damage. So Najin just doesn't want to deal with it, you know? All right, well, Gragas is actually going to be banned this time. Take that away from Watch. We'll see what else he can do in terms of dealing with his champion pool. And now uh, <laughs> this music keeps so throwing know, me right? off so bad. <laughs> it makes you want to, you know, bob your head. And, uh, it's just so know, different and get, so sudden. You want to get jiggy with it? Is that the idea here? That I suppose that is the idea, though. I guess I do want to. You weren't into the get Will Smith jiggy the, with it. When was that? Was that early 2000s? I don't know. All right. Well, Alistair is going to be banned as well. So taking away. Two of the champions that Najin has been heavily relying on in the first two games tonight. We'll see how how they're going to react. Okay, back to normal there. Oh, it's over. <laughs> first pick, Maokai, for Anarchy. Ixu did uh, perfectly fine on that champion last game. But they will be giving up the LeBlanc to Goong in the first round of the draft if they want it. And but the Sejuani. Well, Rek'Sai, Evelyn, Gragas, all banned. So a lot of bans targeted at the jungle so far. Lyra may try and resort. Now, we did see a lot of Lee Sin on this patch in the qualifiers. Even Lee Sin bans in no. the qualifiers on 5.9. So there is not a guarantee that Lyra won't pick this up. Zed will make it through the draft this time. Mickey taking a look at that champion. It is something that historically he has played a lot of, and Lyra may try to go for the Nunu instead. Yeah, because of that uh, Evelyn ban, that lets uh, Mickey pick up Zed. We'll see what he can do with it. If he wants to lock that in, perhaps uh, Morgana taken into the Thresh. Good counter pick. Don't need to grab it quite yet. Oh, I really hope he doesn't play the Elise. Elise is still. Not a particularly strong champion, either Jarvan or Lee Sin or Nunu would be, in fact, better than that. I think I heard you say that about a different champion last game, though. <laughs> How'd that work out? There's the Jarvan, though. Okay, and they're going to grab the Morgana as well, which I suppose technically is a bit of a flex pick. Probably going to support, I would guess, in this case, but you never know. Yeah, you do never know, especially, again, because during the qualifiers there were multiple Morgana pickups. And LeBlanc is available, too. Yeah, LeBlanc falling very far down the draft this time. Was banned in the last one, but first picked on blue side by Anarchy in the previous game. They're not going to all in on that champion. Nar locked in once again for Duke. OQ will be taking the lane bully this time around. Tired of being on the losing end of some of these 2v2 matchups, and yeah. so he'll grab the Lucian. They made OQ angry. Oh, it's time to get funky again. And Anarchy. Taking a look at this Corky. I feel like I'm playing a mini game in Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> so, we're gonna go with this one. The Corky, obviously, still a viable pickup, and they may just go ahead and take that Zed blind anyway. All right. A little bit of siege, I suppose. They will take that Zed, and there's Alrighty. a Corky as well. A little bit risky, but definitely a comfort pick for Mickey. So and taking the LeBlanc into it, that's a pure skill matchup in the mid lane. I think Goon's going to be a lot more comfortable on that LeBlanc than he was on the Cassiopeia. That's true, but he doesn't I suppose. There's always a possibility that he could just play mid Urgot into this, but that's not going to be the choice they make. <laughs> Goon is going to take that skill matchup as the last pick. Can you imagine a world where Goon plays mid Ur Urgot? I don't think that world exists, Monte Cristo. <laughs> it's so easy to play, though. Yeah, but that's not the point. Goon needs to play hard to play champions because he's actually Urgot bad so and easy to play champions. Urgot's so incredibly good against Zed. You ought, you, 
naturally build that frozen heart as part of your build path and whenever he living shadows into you and remember too that on this patch zed is nerfed so he has to wait one second to, sh to jump back to his shadow after using his death mark so big. basically you have a one second window which is plenty of time when zed jumps on anybody with death mark just to hit r on him yeah well good luck goon it's basically nothing you can do with your ultimate, so I, I, I really think that Urgot would have been powerful here. Yes, it would have loaded them on a AD, but Goong is confident in his skill in this matchup. Obviously, LeBlanc and Zed, two champions he knows inside and out. But much the same could be same said for Mickey here. Well, like you said, it's a skill matchup. We will see who's more skilled after this game. As Najin fighting for pride, fighting for honor, and anarchy, fighting for relevance. You're in Champion Summer. Let's get in the game and see who takes it. That's right, Faker. One week off. It's time to put on that jersey again. Start playing some League of Legends. They have like a commercial right now where Faker is out like walking through the forest in regular clothes, like sniffing flowers and things like that. And then he feels something under his foot and he looks down and it's an R key from a keyboard. <laughs> I'm not even making this up. Nope. And he picks it up and it, when he stands up, he's in his SKT jersey again. <laughs> yep. And actually the commercials for uh, champions here in Korea, their tagline is no rest. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's my tagline this week too, OGN. <laughs> Go. So the thing about this LeBlanc Zed matchup is, and when I say it's a skill matchup, it is, but it really delays LeBlanc's build because the problem with this matchup from the LeBlanc side is that you pretty much have to build arm guard unless you have balls of steel. Um, and building that arm guard as a first item delays LeBlanc's ability to actually blow somebody up very effectively. Yep. Meanwhile, Zed just builds the same as Zed always builds and therefore has a larger window of time to split push in the mid game uh, with less fear. So it's a really, it, because of item build paths, it ends up being pretty weird. But at least in terms of power spikes, it does favor Zed. But in the early game and in terms of just the 1v1, it's Hey, it's your favorite Sejuani skin. At least. Oh, I got that going for me. And it's Watch, one of your favorite junglers, I know. I know you, Monty. Um. <laughs> we love you some Watch. I especially oh. like his least in play. A little bit of harassment for Pure coming in. Yeah, that's steal. Oh, he didn't get one of them. But he will harass. It's a lot of Pira. damage onto the jungler early, Ixu. though. Pure may have overdone this. Yeah, Pure is in a lot of trouble. There's a flash. They can chase him. AD carry coming up to help out. There's OQ. So Pure, Pure. actually living through that one. And two flashes used for one. They're also yeah. taking a lot of damage. And that allows Goong to freely attack Mickey in the mid lane. Some pretty nice trades down there without fear of the enemy jungler. So Pure took a lot of damage. But we'll see how much this actually delays Lyra's pathing. He's already out of potions here. Looking for that level two gank. Yeah, he's only got three CS, kind of tough. So Zed shurikens are kind of like Thor's hammer in that you, you throw them and they just kind of come back, you know? But you probably can't pick up Zed shurikens unless you're like pure evil or something, you know? <laughs> Is that how it works? They just stick to the ground stubbornly? That's right. Only people like uh, Joffrey from Game of Thrones can use Zed shurikens. I picked up a Zed Shuriken once. Did you? I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, and then you held. That's how. That's how. That's why I didn't know, because I've always been able to pick him up. Though. You held Thor's hammer in the other hand, and then you're like, I am one with the universe. <laughs> As your fancy tie billowed majestically in the wind, <laughs> like a superhero's cape. <laughs> It was an interesting off-season, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Some crazy stuff happened. You guys wouldn't believe. Uh, it was a very short off-season. <laughs> That's right. Was there an off-season? I, th I, I think there was. 
Oh, it's watch. Flash and Watch. He's going in on Ixu. Oku coming in. If they can give him this first kill, Watch. Oh, that's first blood going to Oku. Pretty nice. Using that summoner heal to keep his top laner alive and keep his jungler alive. Meanwhile, action in the mid lane. Oh, 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 oh Mickey. the last tick of that ignite. So Mickey sees Watch and immediately takes advantage of that opportunity using both summoners. Goong is going to be able to return that, though, considering that he still has the ignite. Yeah, epic and Mickey. Mickey, some good stuff. His return to Korea here. Yeah. Well, pretty volatile game so far, but dead even. That was a very unexpected gank from Watch, by the way. That is not a normal gank that you would make in this situation. Considering Najin decided to send their support up to meet the enemy in a 2v2. Also unusual that Anarchy would keep Snowflower up in the top side so long instead of swapping him back down. But you don't expect to be zoned off the tower like that in a 2v1 in the bottom side on Maokai. So tricky little gank right there. OQ does use his summoner heal to make that play. And it proves pretty darn effective, so. A little bit, a little bit odd, odd things happening so far in this game. Oh, more fights. Ah, oh, the chains do not connect. Yeah, Mickey actually going for the Hex Drinker first right here, so that's gonna make it harder for Goong to answer, even with that Ignite up. It looks like Goong is going for the Arm Guards too, but taking him a while to get there. Mickey having a big edge there. Wow, already putting a real, good amount of damage onto this LeBlanc. Yeah, this is why I was a little skeptical about picking this LeBlanc. I mean, they, if you just think about Najin's strategy going here, this doesn't really make sense. They spent two games banning the Zed because they're obviously very concerned with Mickey's Zed. Oh, Goong in a little bit of trouble. There's a death mark as well. Can he finish him off? He's chasing the wrong one, taking some turret hits. Oh, no, he was chasing the right one. Wow, I'm faked out, but Mickey wasn't for a moment. Wow, Mickey barely escaping from that as well, getting yet another kill. Just all inning right at six with that very slight experience advantage that he had. And now he's just beating Goong in his own game. Yeah. You know, this is Goong okay. on what he's supposedly best at. So you really have to question the picks and bans here. Yeah. So Najin has last pick on the red side. They spend two games banning the Zed, and then obviously very worried about Mickey Zed in any circumstances, whether they have last pick or not. Right? They banned it on red side in game one. But yep. then they give him the Zed, and when when they have this opportunity to counterpick it, they decide to play into a, a high skill matchup. Yeah. I don't know what's going on and with, then with Najin. I mean, you've got Goong trying to fight this Hex Drinker Zed, too, when he only has an ability tome and cloth armor. So. And not level six? Yeah. Well, I, he did get all in right there, so it wasn't entirely his fault, and he yeah, thought he was going to be safe with the uh, the Ignite still up, but mm. fortunately couldn't make it work, dodged outside of his turret right there, and now he has to play extremely defensively, taking a really big hit in terms of his farm. Yeah, down by 20 already, and it's probably not gonna get much better anytime soon. And so the fact that this is going on really makes you wonder then if Najin's going to be capable of having that dragon control that they've had in some of the, in, uh, the other games. Well. Fortunately for them, Anarchy's scaling with this composition with Jarvan, Zed, and Corky is pretty bad. It, Anarchy has to win really hard in this mid game, and in spite of those two kills, we're only looking at, well, I mean, pretty much a hundred gold advantage overall for Anarchy, and we see that OQ picking up that kill as well with that first blood will be able to power up and hopefully wave clear his team out of the mid game. As long as Najin can wave clear well enough in the mid game and not lose too many turrets, they should have a pretty easy time run late. Sure enough. Let's see what they can do though. I mean, that early lead already growing for Anarchy. Nice. Forces of chaos. Like, they really <laughs> just need to, when it comes to the team uniforms, like, I think pretty clearly. In my mind, OGN just gave him some shirts today when they came in. That's my that's my theory on it. But I they just need to wear whatever they want to wear, man. Well, they either need to look like badass punk rocker, or they need to have like dome fossil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on their shirt. Exactly, exactly. They're not any weak servants of the helix. Dome fossil all the way, right? For Team 
Team Anarchy. I actually may have gotten that reversed. I think... I don't remember. Helix was, I'm, Twitch plays Pokemon It's been a long. while. It's been a while since Twitch plays Pokemon, but I think... I want to say Helix was... You know, the good guys, right? <laughs> You know what, though? Order. If they're going to name themselves Anarchy they, and they don't have a coach, they really just need to surrender to Twitch chat for their thick band fans. That's true. They need to start a Reddit thread. Oh, boy, they're going to catch Lyra, who's going to get back over the wall. Watch flashing for that kill, though. <laughs> Got to burn that flash sometimes. But, yeah, they should just start a Reddit thread after every game and be like, what do you think we could do better, community? No, I think they should just have the Twitch chat up during pick and ban. Oh, yeah. And then uh, whatever champions get spammed, name gets spammed the most during their pick and ban, that's who they have to lock in I don't during, think that, during any, that phase. I don't think there's any champions named Hot Grill, though, so <laughs> I don't know how they're going to decide. <laughs> it's going to be tough to choose. And PogChamp doesn't actually refer to a champ in League of Legends, so I, don't, I just don't think your plan's going to work, man. I'm sorry. It was a nice idea, but... That's a mark. That's not even the right company. <laughs> Kappa. <laughs> well, it's been an action pack game so far, but Anarchy. The tiniest bit behind in gold, and the kills have been evened up now by Najin, too. So. Well, the big thing is this 2 0 0 Z. This Z yeah. really needs to get a pretty big edge through the split push. And no one's really going to be able to stop him for quite some time. But they've got to get this Z. Oh, here we go. Deathmark used. Mickey tries to go back under turret. Wow, that's a long turret hit. Well, uh, Goong actually did the right thing right there. Popped yeah. right back under turret during Deathmark, so there wasn't that much of a kill threat. Duke is just going to toss everyone back like they're... Oh, not a... Small things. Usually successful gank for Lyra. who has to decide to go for Cinder Hulk. Watch there we go. Solo the Dragon, of course. They have the pressure on the bottom side, and Zed has recalled, so easy Dragon on the opposite side of the map for Najin. That's kind of a... a relief too for Naj to be able to claim that one. Yes, hugely. So, yeah. I mean, basically right now, because Anarchy is back in a 2v2 situation, uh, yes, they have the Sheen, yes, they have the level 6 Corky, so they're not as susceptible to the bullying from OQ's Lucian. They're still getting pushed in a little bit, and they have to wait for that Trinity Force, swap Corky to the mid lane, put Zed in bottom or top, and then really try and let him take over. If they can get Zed into the 1v1 with Duke, that would be ideal because Duke is itemizing for magic resist right there and so will be vulnerable to to Mickey Zed. That, that's their specific condition for winning because if they don't do that and they don't get turrets down and continue to snowball some kills, they just probably are not going to be competitive late right. against the composition that Najin is running. They simply will not have enough damage to deal with with Najin's tank line. Very true. So they're actually grouping really early right here. They're actually, they're grouping pre-Trinity Force as they put Zed down there. Well, they've got the Sheen on the Corky, so they can do a decent amount of damage to turrets. Yeah, that's, a, that's a surprising lane swap, though, and I don't think it was one that Najin was necessarily anticipating. We can see that in response, OQ is going into the mid lane just to stave off Corky and deal with some of that wave clear. Goong in the bottom side right now, just trying to play it safe. Farm with the distortion under turret so that he isn't gonna have too many chances. Yep. I feel like you could do a corporate Zed skin and just call it like Ted or something. It's just an average guy in a polo shirt and slacks, throws paper clips or something. Giving talks. Yeah, that's right. I see what you did there. <laughs> All right. Well, I am surprised they didn't put, try and get this head into the Gnar lane, but still getting a tiny amount of damage onto that turret. Watch is going to wait there, see if he can find an angle. And if he does hit level 11, level 2, and death mark. Watch, waiting under the tower. They're trying to just to protect against that all in, but Goong is two levels down. Wow. Oh, oh. <laughs> Lancer doesn't stop the recall. And this Corky still struggling right here. Going ahead and taking the Raptors instead of actually being able to clear out 
much in the way of this mid wave. Yeah, so despite that early lead for Zed, the rest of it, the rest of the team is not doing quite as well. Yeah, but getting the early lead on Zed is about the best thing you could ask for if you're Anarchy, because you can see that that tower is going down slowly, and there's really no answer to it. From the Najin side, they don't have a good way to deal with the Fed Zed or on this team quite yet. Yep. And they can't 2v1 the Zed either uh, without the risk of losing that mid turret. So here's the moment of truth. Trinity Force is now complete. Can they do something here? You can see Snowflower just walking through, getting some deep wards in and trying to put down some damage onto the turret. Now, if they can get Maokai into the long lane here after taking down the turret, that would be ideal. Duke still having his way on the top side of the map. Yep, they've got Sangin in the middle now. Getting a decent amount of CS. Now they gave away the blue buff, but it's gonna cost them even more damage onto the turrets from the minions right here. Bit surprised that Mickey isn't playing this more aggressively. He has the deep wards that were just placed in there by Morgana. He can take out this turret. He should be able to. Yep, oh, there's a death mark down on Dagoon. Oh, Mickey may have made a bit of a mistake. He didn't finish off the turret. He just used his ult and then kind of walked around. Meanwhile, Najin is going to be able to take the, uh, or going to lose the mid lane turret, perhaps. Yep, they will indeed flash from Mickey. Najin not able to catch him, and they give up mid at the same time. That was that was a bit of an awkward series of events across the board, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I really feel like Mickey could have autoed that turret a couple more times while Goon was overdoing blue pretty safely. Yeah. And they could have taken out both tier ones. Instead, Mickey beats a hasty retreat, and now they lose some damage onto their tier one on the bottom side. Well, Lyra's going to have a hard time defending this turret against OQ. OQ already has it as Infinity Edge as well, too. And so they can't quite take the turret out. Oops, OQ taking a lot of damage. They will get bottom. Wow, that's a huge answer from Najin right there as they maintain that gold lead. This is pretty good situation for them as Mickey takes a bit of a detour just to get the blue buff right here. Now they swap Maokai in there to finish off this tower. Zed is going to head into the top side. So Duke has managed to keep a pretty nice CS lead and top throughout all of this as well too, but he might get Dove here. Pierce coming up to help him out. Yeah, yeah. great Lantern, just get him out of there immediately. You can't save him or the turret in that situation. He will get Dove with just the magic resist items and Goom at the same time is getting some autos down onto mid, so. Two to one turrets. I heard both the Anarchy fans in the audience clapping there. <laughs> Although they're gonna have more after today. <laughs> Definitely will. So, tower's going down. Got three to one. All outers finally down for Anarchy. So this is the point where it becomes really difficult to play Zed in the current meta because you have to continue to get towers or you can't team fight. If you're playing Zed, you need to get a huge advantage off of split pushing. And that is just so difficult to do because you're never going to take a solo inhibitor against a team unless they make a huge mistake. Right. And you can't team fight very effectively as Zed unless you have a large, large edge. But getting that edge after the outer ring of turrets goes down is the, the main quandary. And that's why we see so many teams that pick Zed sort of stall out here in the mid game and fall off in terms of their effectiveness. Well, Najin looking for a chance to shine here. Near Dragon, Goon not able to put too much damage onto Lyra. But Najin's going to activate that Dragon. They're going to go for it. Ixu Sangyun trying to poke here. Well, mostly Sangyun can't really poke too much. Meganar is almost down right now. This is the best time for Najin to fight. Yeah. But Dragon's up. Looks like they might just need to give this one up. They will. Yeah, they couldn't, they couldn't keep on going right there without the Meganar yeah. available. Mickey was in the mid lane, putting pressure down onto the tier two. They lost some minions into the tower right there, and Duke's still trying to push up and take out the tier one. Meanwhile, here comes... Righteous Glory. Who pops it, they just want the turret. Here comes the teleport. Goon going in for a little bit of damage. Watch it, pure chasing. OQ following behind. Ah, oh, Goon missed the chains. He wasn't able to lock down Ixu here. Chong Yu takes some damage. Oh, Pure. they missed the death sentence. Yep. Duke is Meganar, but he's really not anywhere near the team unless he decides to, like, flash ult or something. Yeah, I don't so. think Nod wants to 
gauge that. TP advantage for Ixu right now. Now Duke did force them to lose a couple waves of experience in the top side just by pushing it up right before he came in. And they saved their tier two for it, but ultimately not really worth it just for the teleport, even though Duke continues to stress that CS lead. It's okay, as long as they hold on to the objectives and Duke is continues to get tankier and tankier and tankier, Najin is in a good position. Well, Denmark on a pure, he's in a lot of trouble here. The pure was not looking at his screen when that happened. I don't think so, no. <laughs> he sort of sat there for the first half of death mark, so easy kill for Mickey. Yep. I think Pure wasn't looking at the news like, oh, well, <laughs> play, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? You die. Zed is in a very good position right now. Mickey is just going to calmly TP back. Yep. Great wards again yeah. from Anarchy. Anarchy is certainly playing a, a little bit higher of a level of, of playing their first match than we've seen from a lot of the uh, newer squads in Korea this year. It's looking pretty good. So they're looking better than Samsung did last year. They're looking better than I am, at least for this first match anyway. They get the flash out of uh, Snowflower. Meanwhile, Najin is looking as delightfully inconsistent as ever. They are so nodging. That's so knowledge or nodging. I don't even know <laughs> what words I'm saying anymore. We've reached that point. We've got a whole nother best of three guys. Coming up. Flash out of the cataclysm from Pure. Oh. Wow. That blue buff is all Mickey's. Well, nobody can tangle with Mickey right now. No. And no one's going to be able to tangle with him for the next little while, I mean, again, this said, once he reaches the late game, once the QSS comes in onto OQ, it becomes problematic, but until that happens, and here we go. Oh, Deathmark on OQ, he gets caught over the wall with the lantern, looks like he'll live through it for now. Meanwhile, Goon getting in the back line onto Snowflower. Oh, goodbye, Pure. Meanwhile, Duke coming from the side, but it's a little bit too late. Anarchy already in a good position in this fight. They're gonna take out this mid lane turret. Another team fight one, one for two. Harry's just getting bursted down too early for Najin to really fight this. Well, yeah. everyone was separated right there. That's the kind of fight that Anarchy wants. I mean, Watch yep. was on the side. They pushed him out from under the turret. Now oh. Mickey getting low. Chains activate. Can they finish oh. him off? Not that quite. That was a bold dashboard. Whoa, flash. flash for OQ. OQ. Duke comes in. He becomes Meganar right now. Dies. Mega dead. Well, Duke has a build with very little armor at this point. He's prioritized yeah. that magic resist pretty heavily, and that's more kills onto Mickey. This is, this is really what Anarchy needs. Pretty solid gold lead for them right now. Another turret down. Sort of like awkwardly flash against the wall into four people as a one-third health AD carry. Well, well Ixu just that's, trapped him immediately with the twisted so advance. Yep. There you go, Mickey hits his third core item right now before Goong really has much of anything at all. So here you go, Oku gets caught out on the side, Lantern back in, and Pure lands a nice, actually, combo onto Songyun right there, but there's no follow-up on the crowd control because Oku's already at 50% HP, as is Goong. Duke's in on the side, but there's the tower going down. Just look at the chain of events from this point forward, so. Duke not really close to getting back into that Meganar. And we don't get to see OQ recklessly flashing forward. Yep. They're really not respecting at all the cooldown on that Twisted Advance. Now, Goong's still struggling right now, does have the Murillo Nomicon, but still waiting to finish out that gold on the Zonia's Hourglass. Now that's a huge item for him because that means that he can't get Zed ulted anymore. There we go, he just picked it up right now. That's really important. Yep, so now he can finally fight Mickey a little bit, but Mickey's gonna be doing so much damage. All Najin has to do is turtle right here. They don't have to take these fights. They, they already got the first dragon. They don't have to fight this next dragon. If they wait for just a little bit until the QSS comes down, the Zonia's- Oh, you find Songyun, Valkyrie away. Nice ult onto Ixu. And the rest of their Najin coming in. Box used. They managed to take down Songyun. 
Meanwhile, Ixu comes in. There's the death mark. Mickey doing a little bit of damage here. Got the kill on the watch. But Najin able to win this fight with relative ease. There's a slow into Snowfaller. Culling used. Goon picks up that kill. So they find a 5v3 there, which yeah. is why they're able to take it up. So Not we bad. did have some split pushing, so that was smart for Najin to pull the trigger. Of course, right as they say, I say they shouldn't fight, but that was, it was an in that fight. Yeah, yeah, when you're when you're two men up and you can make that pick. Yeah, and Dragon is about to come up too, so really the timing yes. couldn't have been better for Najin. Yeah, and taking this next Dragon is huge too because that prevents Anarchy from ending this game efficiently off of forcing fights over and over and over again to the Dragon. So that's just a boon right there for them. You can see two members in the mid lane right now for Anarchy. Song Yoon moving too far forward. And honestly, right there, Zed should have just stayed and taken out the inhibitor turret. There's no reason for him to come into this fight late. Uh, he had the minion wave already there, could have done significant damage, likely taken it out. And even though he did pick up a kill, it doesn't actually prevent any objectives from going down. Yep. Uh, Mickey deciding to take his split push up to the top lane for now. Push up that wave a little bit. I mean, Anarchy is still up four turrets to one. Well, that's about to change big time. Najin should be snagging the gold lead as long as they can take down a couple outers right here. And no luck just yet. Mickey, oh, really? Finds OQ, pops that. I don't know he wants to do that. Looks like he doesn't. Too many Najin players nearby. Watch this result right there, which keeps Mickey alive, but he burned quite a bit in order to pull, try and pull that off. And yeah. pressure still going to be coming in the mid lane. Is that tower really hanging by a thread right now? Well, Najin getting pushed back for the moment, but they've still got good wave clear. So they'll be able to shove it right back. Like no turret just yet, Mickey. Managing to heal himself right back up and mm -hmm. rejoin the fray. Still no blade, no death mark available to him. What do you think about the Merc treads on uh, on Zed here? I think it's good. Uh, he, he's definitely counting on the fact that he's going to be encountering some CC right here and also helps him against the, Le the uh, LeBlanc. That's true, and the 1v1 the against LeBlanc, it's nice to reduce the time you're trapped yeah, with the chains. And really it's just, I mean, Zed is the first champ anyway, so other boots, not gonna be doing a whole lot for him. You really need to just stay alive so you can re-enter again once you use one round of your cooldowns. That's true. Well, Najin trying to push all their lanes up right now. Still just one turret. Oh, death mark on the goon, but Mickey has to run away. They've been doing a pretty good job of sticking together for now and not giving Mickey those 1v1s he's been looking for throughout the earlier parts of the game. Okay. Well, yeah. Pressure's still on Najin, though. Yeah, Ixu has actually been doing a pretty good job of split pushing tonight overall. And, you know, one of the things that's been standing out is Najin's side wave control has been absolutely abysmal tonight. It seems like the pressure's constantly on them. Anarchy is yeah. controlling the tempo of the game much better. Here we go. You can see with that dark binding, they ult Ixu here. Deathmark coming in the back lines. And will they get the kill? Watch, yeah, manages to take down Ixu. Mega Nar now gets a stun onto Songyun right away. Big Nar ult onto Mickey and Songyun. There goes the ADC. Mickey on the run. Goodbye support. Snowflower taken down. And so far, nobody dead on Najin just yet. Duke chasing. And it looks like Najin able to win that fight. Yeah, the question is, can they take anything off of it, though? Because all of their lanes are again pushed right back up. Yep. They haven't been able to take down this mid lane, even tier one yet. And Najin has been struggling with this. These tier ones from Anarchy have been staying up for a shockingly long time this evening. You know, I wonder if this really exposes a weakness early on for Najin that other teams can exploit, too, if they oh. see Najin struggling so much. I don't think that Mickey's going to find an opportunity here. Oh. Oh, Goon might find one though. Gets the chains, and there's a stun. Looks like they'll be able to take him out. Deathmark down onto Duke. Wow, Mickey manages to make it out, but they're still going to lose the turret. So a win for Najin overall. Two minutes until Dragon. Najin finally taking the gold lead, I believe, for more or less the first time in this game. So there's the QSS onto OQ right now. Now, 
In game one, I wasn't that impressed with his QSS mechanics on the vein. He was actually pretty late on QSSing a lot of the stuns that were coming in. But see what he can do with it this time around. He simple to QSS a death mark off of you after it goes down. So, but now Mickey is in big trouble. Zonias are done. Randuin's frozen heart. QSS. Who do you really death mark right now? Pure is your yeah. only good option left. And, and even even using your combo and taking up pure doesn't do a whole lot because Thresh is gonna have the box down. Ideally, have already done all he needs to do in the fight anyway. Yeah. Be a bit tricky. So. Yeah. Dragon in a minute. Najin looking pretty firmly in control of this game. Cornmail also done for Duke as well. That is. Yeah. And really the damage from Anarchy not not there. Trinity Forest Bloodthirster. Lots and lots of armor, but no last whisper. Oh, there we go. They're trying to make a play on Delira here. Black Shield helps them out quite a bit. Nice force of the TP from Najin. They got some poke damage down as well, so even more of an advantage for them. Anarchy really wants to fight this dragon, but I'm just not sure they have the presence to do it. Right before it starts, OQ will back off and grab a red buff for himself. Eight seconds until the next dragon. Najin's gotten two out of the three so far. Always seeming to manage to just barely find a way. Ultimate hits Mickey and Ixu as well too, but not a lot of immediate follow-up. There's a play. They don't get it because of that black shield. OQ pops a calling, getting a lot of damage down on the Snowflower. And there's Pure getting taken out. Zed did find his mark for death. Sony is used for Goon as he gets out of that fight. Still gets the chains off at the very end. Ixu in the back lines making a lot of plays here that are letting Anarchy come through this fight. Valkyrie over the wall. And there's a double kill already for Songyun. And Najin getting pushed back this time right before the dragon. Now they took that fight, but Duke had, wasn't anywhere close to having his Meganar form yet. They thought yep. they could hit a good ult, but they actually focused Ixu instead of Mickey, even though both of them were hit by the Glacial Prison. And Ixu actually manages to make it out alive in that circumstance as well. Dangerous Baron to go for. That's a lot of low health members on Anarchy. Looks yep. like Ixu's just gonna die. <laughs> And Goon may not be done yet. There's nope. Mickey getting taken out now. Being very low. Oh, but the rocket oh, from Song Oh, Q just face planted his dash into a wall, actually. Wow. He, that may actually cost him the Baron. Oh, Baron does get taken by Anarchy anyway. But Najin coming in to try to contest this now. Deathmark goes down to Anarchy. is going to get the Baron and then some. Goodbye, Duke. A double kill now for Mickey. And things are not looking good Oq's QSS was not up during that engagement, so he couldn't cleanse out of the exhaust or the death mark that hit him. But he tried to dash over the Baron Wall right there, but couldn't, that just face planted, didn't make it over. Whoops. And had he made it over, he probably would have been able to make them, to have them stop that Baron attempt. Hmm. Well, Najin is not having the best night here. Well, Najin just, falling behind by 6k gold all of a sudden as they wow. file one by one into the Baron bit. They're going to give up the Dragon as well, even things out on that front. And this is the kind of lead that can propel Anarchy to a victory right now. It certainly Mickey is. Mickey is absolutely huge. He has 100% kill contribution on his team so far. Yeah, Mickey's been pretty impressive overall tonight. But this said, you can see why it's banned against him. I mean, the first thing he did in that last big fight was just to immediately blow up Pure. Yeah, he found the target he needed, that's yep. for sure. But Najin also really misplayed that last team fight. Can't be underestimated. Mickey. Yeah, yeah. well, a series of 1v5s doesn't do you a lot of good. I mean, focusing down the Maokai when you hit both the Maokai and the Zed with the ultimate. I mean, Mickey was a bit farther away from everyone, oh, but still. It didn't matter. Okay. You, you, have to, wow. you have to make that decision. <laughs> properly and then also going in when Duke was so far away from Meganar and now Anarchy uh -oh. is well, Duke gets hit. Yeah he does already extremely low here. There's the Zonias but he's gonna be easy pickings once he's done. He manages to make it out for now. There's a box he's way in the back of the base so watch comes in big gnarl but Anarchy just all over these guys. 
Wow, Snowflower even gets the ult on Oku. He's going to be able to cleanse out of it with that Quicksilver Sash. Yeah, but actually hitting that binding right there made it so that there's no defense now. Yep. Well, Deathmark's already down, but... Well, Gugu and Oku's still up. Anarchy, they're going for it, man. They really want to win right here. Gugu coming in, doing a lot of damage here. There goes Ixu getting taken out. Actually, Songyu manages to stay alive. Do enough damage for Ixu to escape. First inhibitor turret, or next turret going down, Oku. Getting taken out, that's a double kill for Songyu now, and Najin, uh-oh, uh-oh guys, if you're a Najin fan, it's time to be sad, because Anarchy takes out Najin in the first match of Champion Summer. This is gonna be an interesting season, isn't it? It sure is, and for how hard Anarchy wow. got dominated by <laughs> Incredible Miracle this last weekend, Najin comes in, and again, you really have to question Najin's pick and ban right there. Yeah. But Mickey, man, 10-0 and 10 on Zed, 100% kill contribution, justifying that ban. And look at the smiles on the faces. Well, that is so big of for this team. Wow, what an incredible upset in the first match of the season. I mean, and Najin is a very veteran esports organization, too. If these guys can come in with, like, literally no staff behind them, and just through raw skill, take out Najin. That's that's a pretty big statement there, both for Anarchy and against Najin. Yeah, well, Najin had a lot of issues tonight, Mickey. And yeah, they did. Doing very well in terms of champion damage that game. Wow, well, this season's already interesting. How about that? <laughs> Started off with a